So welcome back. In this video, I'm going to actually show you how you can do some different cropping and resizing techniques and also show you how you can make it look like you've got more than one camera if you don't already. So let's start straight away and just show you how to do different resizing and cropping techniques. First of all, I'm going to click inside the canvas to select the whole thing. Now you'll notice that I've now got this surrounding frame with circular buttons on the sides. What this does is it lets you resize what's on your screen. Now this is especially good when you've got extra elements over the top of each other and I'll go into that in a different video because that involves actually adding elements to the screen which is not what this one is about. Now if you wanted to resize your image within your canvas you can actually just go to one of these, hover over it, it turns into a double arrow and then you can click and hold and drag. Now if you hold one at the sides or the top or the bottom and click and drag it will actually distort your image because what you're doing is you're resizing it but not keeping the proportions. I'll just show you at the top as well. Now this is good if you're deliberately trying to distort something or maybe it's just a solid color or something like that and it won't matter. But obviously when you've got a person or an image on there that you don't want to distort, then what you need to do is come to one of the corners and click and drag and this will actually do it within proportion. And then you can do things like picture in picture or add extra elements like maybe a pretend TV set in the background. For the benefits of this video though, I'll pop that back how it was. Now the buttons in the top right corner of this screen allow you to manipulate the canvas in different ways. If I click this one here which is the crop tool, you'll notice it changes the little handles on the side of the frame to square instead of circle. Now when we drag and drop, this will actually crop the image to where we want it. Now this is especially important if, like me, you've got your lights in the frame at the moment or if you've got something you just don't want to be seen. Now as we covered in the other section, people have different size studio space. Sometimes this won't matter to you, other times you will have stuff in frame that you don't want there. Or maybe you've only got part of your wall painted and you want to cut out the rest of it. All you have to do is click and drag until you've hidden the things that you don't want to be seen on screen. The same goes with the other side. Now as you can see on my particular one, I've got this blue background, but we'll get rid of all this extra green stuff when we do the chroma key settings, which is just the posh way of saying getting rid of the green. Another thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to uncheck the crop so it turns back into the resize, which you can tell by the fact it's turned back to circles. I'm going to grab this edge here and I'm going to actually make myself that little bit bigger to fill the frame. Now a good tip as far as positioning yourself on screen is to have it so that your head's got a slight gap above it but not too close to the edge. It's pretty much personal preference on how much of a gap but just be sure it's not too big because it can look a little bit silly when you're sat down the bottom of the video screen. Likewise don't do it too close because if you move your head too much you'll end up cutting off the top especially if you've got a silly spiky haircut like I have. So that's it cropped and resized. I'll just show you what these other buttons do as well while we're here. Now this one here is the hand icon. If I click that, we can actually now move our entire video screen around. Now this isn't moving anything in the actual composition of the video, it's just moving the actual screen around. Now at the moment we can see the whole screen so it doesn't really make any difference to us. But if we were zoomed in, which we can do by using this drop down here, when we want more detail, you'll see that now we can't see it all. So the hand now means we can search around our canvas and get to the points that we need to get to. This is great for up close editing. For now, I'm gonna pop this back to shrink to fit, which means it will always fit the entire screen inside your canvas area just here. Now, if you wanted to, you can also use these to switch to full screen mode, which means you can see exactly what it is without all the Camtasia stuff around it. I just hit escape in order to get back into the actual screen. And this one here actually detaches this player which means that you can have it separate to all the rest of it if maybe your clip bin is so big that you need this whole area here. Now I'm just going to pop that back by clicking the button again to attach it. Again, this is a personal preference. I just prefer to work this way with the three separate areas that I explained before. Now, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, a great way to use these techniques is to make it look like you've got a second camera. Now think about when you're looking at different films and videos. They tend to cut to different shots of just faces or close-ups or pan shots, whatever it may be. Now by using cropping and resizing, you can actually give this effect without ever needing to buy a second camera. I'll show you exactly what I mean. We've already got this split into two where we made the edit earlier. So down here I have this one here and if I move the playhead into the second split, which is shown by this thumbnail, you'll see that the edits we just made only applied to the clip that was highlighted at the time. If you've got a lot of split clips and you want to apply the same thing to all of them, you can actually come down to the track that they're on, 
right click and select all media on track. Now whatever edits you make will actually apply to every single clip. But for now we want to keep this separate so I can show you this other technique. So we'll just select this one again by left clicking on it. And as you'll see the first one's deselected now so anything we do will only apply to this clip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look like I've got a second camera. First I need to deselect the hand tool and now it's turned back into our resizing box which again you can see by the rounded circles here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag and make this that little bit bigger like this. As you can see the editing handles have actually gone off the side of the screen now so I can't actually get to them. So all you need to do is go up to here and choose one of the smaller magnifying percentages so they all fit back on screen again. So I'm going to go for the lowest one to be sure. And as you can see I can now see it all again. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to make myself nice and big on there and then I'm going to use the crop tool that I showed you before by clicking on here. I'm going to drag that in just to get rid of that light that we don't need. Now again the green screen is still there, we will cover that in a slightly later video but this is just to show you how you can make this look like a different shot. Now if I go back down here and go just before the split, drag it along, you'll see this shot has got me like this in quite a wide frame and then using these controls here I can actually step forward frame by frame or hold it down to go frame by frame like that and you can see that when it gets to the split all of a sudden I'm up close. Now this is exactly the same sort of technique they use on films and when they're doing reports on the news, things like that. They will cut to make it look more dynamic. Now all we've actually done is zoomed in on exactly the same piece of footage. But it looks like we've got a camera up close and a camera far behind. So if I just go behind and actually click play. How to set it all up and how to do all the editing and everything as well. So without further ado, let's crack on, shall we? Now this course is broken into... You can see how it jumped from one frame to the other and gave that dynamic effect. It's a great way to use a really simple technique to make it look like a top professional video. So now you know exactly how to crop things and resize them and how you can use that for this great technique which is really simple but very effective. So go out there and give it a try and I'll speak to you in the next video.